everyone, Paul from High Tech Legion, and we'll be taking a look at Click BIOS 4 for the MSI Z87 GD65 gaming motherboard. Click BIOS 4 is based on their Click BIOS. Of course, there's some new innovations that they put in. As you can see, it's it's red because this is a gaming board. So since their colors are red and black for gaming and you have the dragon uh, down at the bottom also, that is their logo for their gaming boards or their gaming series to be, to be precise. So let's just go ahead and take a quick look up at the top. Of course it says Click BIOS 4, MSI. Down on this side you have an F12. If you hit F12, what it'll do is it'll take a snapshot of your screen, you can save it onto a thumb drive, so if you have some settings that you want to keep, you'll know what they are. Of course here to the, to the very right you have language, you can change your language. And let's go down now, of course you have the denomination of the board. OC Genie, if you want to use if you want to use OC Genie via the motherboard instead of on the actual I mean in the BIOS instead of on the actual motherboard just click that you'll I'll show you in the BIOS settings where you could change that so you could use it via the BIOS instead of on the motherboard. Here's your temperature reading and of course for your CPU and of course your motherboard system temperature. The date and time is here. This tells you what we're looking at. Of course, I have a Core i7-4770K in here. I do not have it uh, overclocked at this time. My DRAM frequency and my memory size. Down below that is all of your connections. Basically, what do you have in your system? It's going to show you exactly what it is. So, of course, we have the Windows Boot Manager. This is your UEFI for your CD or DVD. USB UEFI for USB hard disk, CD-ROM, USB key, of course your UEFI for your network, another hard disk, and of course this is saying that it's uh, my Patriot Pyro, which is actually my hard drive, I don't know why, or is that the one, but in any case, oh there we go, there's my Patriot Pry Pyro, and this is my uh, CD-ROM drive, USB key, regular USB floppy and of course network again. When we look at it we have different panels here as you can see them flashing on and off. And of course the center is where when you click on one of these panels things are going to come up. So let's start with the settings. Once we go into the settings you'll see system status, advanced, boot, security and save and exit. So once we go into system status, this is where you can change your date and time. This shows you what connectors you have in. Also shows you your system information. So we can go back to advanced now, and this is going to show you all your peripherals, your PCI subsystem settings. Of course, this is going to show you your your gener what generation PCIe you're going to use. We'll go back there, back from there, ACPI settings. This is for your power LED that's on the board. Integrated peripherals, of course, this is going to show you what you have. Onboard LAN controller, LAN option ROM, network stack, your SATAs. Your external SATA controller, this does have an as media uh, SATA controller on it. Audio configuration, and of course your HP, HPET. Next would be your integrated graphics controls. This does, since this is an Intel Z board for the fourth generation core processors, you know that they do have graphics on board. So if you wanted to use the onboard graphics on your chip, you can use that through here. And also, it does have Lucid Virtue technology. Intel Rapid Start technology, USB configuration. Super I.O. configuration, Smart Connect configuration, Power Management Setup, Windows 8 configuration. This has MSI Fastboot, you can install that. Uh, of course it has regular Fastboot and then the Windows 8 feature which I have disabled. And then of course your Wake Up Event setup and that will basically wake your computer up if you're putting it in a sleep state. 
So let's go further back and let's go to our boot options. Of course your boot options are going to show you what you want to boot. These will give you all your different boot options here. You could set this by just clicking on it, bringing up your, uh, bringing up the uh, GUI and you could go ahead and change that from there. Hard disk BBS, I only have one hard drive in here right now. CD-ROM properties and UEFI hard drive BBS properties. Under security, this is where you can go ahead and set your uh, passwords just in case you don't want anybody getting into your BIOS. And of course, save and exit. Under that, you have discard changes, save changes and reboot. Save options, save changes, discard changes, restore defaults, and of course, further on down. Our next option would be to go ahead and go to the OC settings, but let me show you the other things because the OC settings are what's going to take the longest. We also have mFlash. mFlash basically what that's going to do is when you want to set up your BIOS, you want to flash your BIOS, go into M, boot into your uh, BIOS, go into mFlash, make sure you have a uh, a USB flash drive in there with the uh, with your with the file on it and. Through here, basically, it's just click, 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 and you can flash your BIOS. On this side, we have an OC profile. Basically, OC profiles would just say you like this uh, one specific setting that you want to do for gaming. If you want to game and you want to use a specific profile, now you could go ahead and save your profiles either on the BIOS or you could save it to USB and you could also load it from a USB which is a good thing just in because every time you change your BIOS you're going to lose your profiles. Hardware monitor. This is something new. This is fairly intuitive. This is going to show you different settings that you can that you have. It's going to show you where your uh, fan speeds are set to etc. And of course you do have sliders here where you could just you could change your uh, your settings for your fan controls, etc. I'm gonna go ahead and set that. Yeah, doesn't like me, does it? All right, there we go. So you can put your min, max, and fan speeds. Everything is intuitive. It'll show you the different different fan controls, so you can control your fans now intuitively with sliders in the BIOS. It's no more click for turbo, click for this, click for that. Here's my CPU temperature. Here is my system temperature. Of course, you can see my fan speed. Right now, I'm using a Corsair 800, 100, H100i. Uh, I do have this on a test bench for the time being. It is not in a case. So, of course, I only have one fan that is controlling the system. Uh, I found that since now that they put the PWM on the processor, you need a you need very good cooling for Haswell. You need very good cooling, and I would suggest some type of an AIO or a very high powered fan if you're going to be performance tuning your system. So as we go into that, you, can, you can, as you change your sliders, your voltages, etc. from here, you could either click default or cancel after you set everything. And of course, when you go ahead and save your BIOS, all these settings will be changed. Next would be Board Explorer. Board Explorer I've, I found pretty cool because basically just say you want to find something and you forget where you have things populated so like right here as you can see I have an NVIDIA video card in my first PCIe slot so that tells me that I have that in there it also tells me what I have in my DRAM slots as you can see I'm using Corsair memory this is the new Corsair memory and make sure that you uh, read our review on it we will be having a review on the new Corsair memory for Haswell if we come up here, this will show you what's connected in each of these ports. It'll tell you if it's empty or full. So as you can see right now, I, I have basically everything empty up here. So I, I thought that was pretty nice because it would give me an idea of what I have and where. And it also shows you what the different things are if you don't know what they are that would be the USB backplate there but now here's your SATA ports as you can see on the SATA ports I have two of them populated one with a with my CD Blu-ray drive and one with my Patriot Pyro 
So now that we went through that, let's go ahead to the OC. As you can see, this is where you're going to be able to do to make all your changes manually in the BIOS so you can performance tune your system. Starting from the top, we'll work our way to the bottom. I might not get too involved in all the stuff that's on here, but I will try to explain it as best as I can. Okay, of, co of course, adjust CPU base clock strap. This is on auto. You have different settings for that. You can change your strap from auto to 1.0, 1.25, 1.67 to 2.5. To 2 By changing your straps, of course, you are physically adding more, more to your base clock, and what you're doing is you're actually upping the frequency of the CPU. CPU base clock apply mode, you have, I have it set to auto, but basically what you can do is, if you don't want to apply your overclock immediately, I guess you could set it to do next boot or do it to immediate. I keep it on auto because auto basically is immediate in my eyes. PCIe PLL, this is your PLL, so you can change that from auto to LC or SB PLL, your filter PLL, and your CPU ratio mode, which is down here. You can change that from auto to fixed to dynamic. Now, CPU ratio mode, once you put it on fixed mode, it's not going to vary with the, with the, uh, with your uh, with your cores, so you will have that fixed. Dynamic, of course, dynamic. They'll go up and down. Adjust CPU ratio. Now this one, I had a little bit of a hard time figuring out because I'm trying to click on it and nothing's happening. Basically, what you need to do with this, this is a manual input. So just say you want to change your CPU ratio to 40, you're going to go ahead and type it into 40, and that's what it's going to do. Your EIST, of course that's enabled by default. Turbo Boost is enabled by default. Enhanced Turbo I have set to Auto. You can change the... In Let's go ahead and get out of that. There we go. You can go ahead and change your Advanced Turbo to Disabled, Enabled, or Auto. Adjust Ring Ratio. Now, Haswell has the PWM on the chip. The Ring Ratio is right here is set to Auto leave it on auto. Until we know a little bit more about these chips, I wouldn't suggest playing with the ring ratio on this chip. I'm still learning a little bit about it. I've been doing some research. As soon as I find out more about the ring ratio, I'll probably do a video and we'll talk about the Haswell chip itself and what the differences are between this and prior generations. Of course, you have your DRAM frequency clock. You could set that to 200 or 266 megahertz. DRAM frequency, at, at this time I have it set to auto, but I also have my XMP profile set on. And as you can see, the XMP profile right here is 2400 megahertz, 10, 12, 12 at 1.65 volts. DRAM timing mode, once I have it on XMP, I'm not going to worry about playing with the timing mode because, of course, the XMP settings will have that in there. Let me go back up here so we can get back to where I was because now I lost my spot. There we are. DRAM training configuration. I have that on auto. It'll just basically train your offsets by itself. So let's go ahead and go further down here. SVID communications on auto, the VCCIN voltage. This basically is set to 1.8. I keep it on auto, which just keeps it on its default. I wouldn't suggest playing with that unless you know what you're doing. CPU core voltage, of course, right now I have it on auto. I'm not overclocking. So if I want to go ahead and, and set my core voltage, I just go ahead and manually input that in again. 1.2, 1.25, I found that these these chips like to be around 1.25. If you really need more than that, you better have a very good cooler because these chips run hot. CPU ring voltage mo mode, ring voltage offset mode. Again, until I know a little bit more about the ring, which is the PW, I wouldn't play with it. Let's leave it on auto. I haven't had to touch it since I started uh, 
started overclocking uh, the Haswell chip. And of course you have your other voltages which is the normal stuff. Basically they have made this chip and they have tuned these boards so well that in the past, if you remember, you used to have to change your PCH voltages. You used to have to change different settings and voltages maybe to kind of play with it. I haven't had a problem. I've, leave, I've been basically leaving everything on auto. Um, I'm not using LN2. I'm not trying to get, you know, uh, 9 gigahertz out of this thing. So what's the sense? If it works on auto, just leave it on auto. Of course, the SPED spectrum is disabled. If we go down to CPU uh, specifications, this will tell you your CPU ID, the microcode, CPU frequency, etc. CPU technology support, this is what the technology is going to support it. Uh, the Intel chip. Let's go back. We have memory Z. Basically, that's going to show you all your information about your memory and it will also show you your XMP settings. And then of course, last but not least, we have CP, CPU features. Of course, we have hyperthreading, active processor cores, limit CPU ID maximum, execute disable bit, and virtualization technology. These are where you would set all your core limit ratios, you would shut off your C1E states, you could adjust your C states, you could also uh, take care of your AES instructions with this. So basically, everything is fairly intuitive. Um, one thing that I kind of, kind of don't like about the BIOS, and I'll be, uh, I'm being honest about it, it, it kind of feels confined in this space here. I kind of like a full screen where, where I don't have to, I mean, I'm using a 27 inch monitor. I'm just trying to figure if I was using a 24 inch monitor, how much smaller it would look, but it just feels a little bit confined. One suggestion that I might have to MSI is maybe to put these blocks up on the top and then have everything else come across. But other than that, it's a very intuitive uh, UEFI BIOS. It flows really nice, as you can see. We have no problems with it flowing, there's no stuttering, there's no stopping, so that's another good thing. It does flow very well. So, in any case, that has been our look at the MSI Z87GD65 Gaming Motherboard BIOS and it's Click BIOS 4. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions, make sure that you uh, definitely respond to this video and we will try to answer them. Remember one thing, if you haven't seen it at High Tech Legion, you might not have seen it at all. Make sure you subscribe to our channel, it's the button down below. Visit us at www.hightechlegion.com. Thank you everybody, have a great day, bye bye.